We are now going to go over problem 1A, the shortest path to your heart. This problem asks us to run Dijkstra's starting from A. And so when we're starting from A, the first thing we do is we put A onto our priority queue with priority zero. And you're gonna notice that our currently recorded distances to everything are infinity because we have no clue how far away everything is from A. And the edge shoes are also null or empty because we again, don't know the best um, path that leads to a node. And so the distance to here is representing the best known distance from A to another node. And the edge two is representing the vertex that comes before one in the best known shortest path. I think the edge two might become a little more clear as we run through the problem. But to get us started, we're starting at A and so we put that onto the priority queue. And this is sort of like our activation energy, right? We just need a starting point. And so A is our starting point. We put it on the queue and then we pop it off. And so the steps of Dijkstra say we pop off the current node. And now we're gonna look at all of the current node's children and see if we can find better distances than the ones we currently know. And so these are the distances we currently know. And now we're gonna look at all the children one by one and see if we can improve or find a better path. First, we may look at B. And so we're gonna look at B and realize, hey, I know before I didn't even know how far B away, how far away B was. I thought it was infinitely far because I just had no clue. Turns out though, we can traverse this edge and get there with a distance of one. And so we'll make that update. And importantly, we're gonna say the edge to B is A because the vertex that comes before B and our best known path to B is A. So I think the name edge shoe can be a little misleading, although that's the um, one that's used in practice or most commonly, but um, it's really representing the vertex where you traverse the edge from like A to B. And so we make the update. And now we're gonna go look at the next child of A. So we'll look at E and we're gonna realize, yep, we can up update our best known distance to E to be seven and as far as we know, the best path to E has us traversing an edge from A to E. And so we put that in our edge too. You're also gonna notice in our priority queue, as we've been going along and seeing the children, um, like sort of surveying them from a distance, we've been adding them to priority queue. And B is in the priority queue above E because it has a better priority. We want to visit things that are closer first. And so B is only one away whereas E is seven away. And so we're gonna visit B or we have B in our priority queue above E. Then we're gonna go visit A's last child D. And so again, we add that to our priority queue, but since we know the distance to get to D from A is just this edge of two, which is seven or sorry, two, I don't know why I said seven. Um, it goes above seven, right? And below one. And so our priority queue looks like this right now. We've inserted D into the correct spot and we've updated our known distance to D to be two and the edge to D on our best known path is A. Now we've seen all of A's children. And so we're done with the sort of iteration in our recursive algorithm and we can move on to popping the next thing off the queue. And so you're gonna notice A is fully visited, it's done with we just pop B off the queue because it was the first thing on the queue. And so we pop it off and now we've confirmed and finalized that this is the best known distance to B. And we're gonna go look at B's children. And so we will update B's child C and we're going to say our best known distance is now four. This is really important. The edge from B to C had a weight of three. But if you recall, Dijkstra's is finding the shortest paths from our start to all other nodes, which means we want the cumulative distance from our start to C. And so the cumulative distance is actually going to be the distance it took to get to B plus that additional edge from B to C. And so one plus three gives us four. And so the distance to C from the start is four. We also say our edge to C is B because on the best known path to C, we get there by traversing this edge from B to C. And finally, we make sure C is in our priority queue with priority four. Awesome. We're now gonna, um, we've seen all of these children, so we're gonna pop the next thing off the queue. 
we pop D up the queue. We've now finalized. This is the best way to get to D. And we're gonna go look at D's children. And so D has this one child, E. And so I want you to take a moment and think about it. We're going to see the distance we could potentially get to E coming from this edge now. I want you to think about it and think if we've improved the best known distance we have for E. And so what we see is currently, we think the best known distance to E is seven by traversing this edge from A to E, right? But now sitting here at D and looking at these children, we go, okay, I have this node E. And if I were to get to E from where I'm currently at, well, that would cost the total distance to get to D, which is two, plus the cost of this edge from D to E, which is three. And two plus three would lead to a total cumulative distance to E of five. This is better than what we previously knew. Before we thought, oh, the best way to get to E has a total distance of seven. But now standing here at D, we realize, wait a minute, there's a better way. This is better. So we're going to update E's distance two to be five. We're gonna update E's edge two to be D because we realize the new best way to get to E is by traversing this DE edge. And we're also going to make sure to update E in our priority queue because actually it's a little closer than we thought. And so its priority can be better. And now we've seen all of these children and we can pop the next thing off the queue and that's C. So we pop C off the queue and we've now finalized the best way to get to C has a distance four and it's traversing this edge B to C and then before B comes A to B. And so we've confirmed that and we're gonna look at C's children now. And so we look at C's child F maybe first and we're going to see that the total distance to get to F is gonna be the distance it took to get to C, which was four, plus the edge weight to additionally push us from C to F. And so four plus two gives us six. And so the cumulative distance from the start to F or A to F is six. We also know our edge two is C because the best known path to F is taking us through C or the CF edge, right? And we make sure to put F on our priority queue with priority six or the same as our distance. Then we are going to look at C's next child. And so we look at the path or the child G and we go, okay, G, um, the total path is going to be eight because it was four to get to C. And then from C to G, this additional next step is another four. And so four plus four is eight. And we get a distance two of eight and the edge two is C. We also make sure to put G on our priority queue. We've now seen all of C's children. And I want you to pause and think. We have distances for everything in our like little table, right? We know the edge to everything in our table. So are we done with dicotomies? Uh, no, not quite. We haven't popped everything off of our queue yet. Or in other words, we haven't finalized that we found the best distances to everything. Only when something is popped off the queue do we have that guarantee of um, correctness or optimality. And so this is really important, even though we have some like known distance, like technically, yeah, there is a path to G that costs eight. We don't know for sure yet if that's the best or if maybe there's a better option out there. And so we'll continue going. We're gonna pop the next thing off the queue, which is E. Sitting here at E, we've now finalized the best way to get to E is this path with distance um, five and edge two is D. And we're gonna look at E's children. And so we see E has this child G. So take a moment to think, are we gonna update this? Have we found a better path to G? We haven't, right? The total distance to get to E is five. And the additional distance from E to G is four. Five plus four is nine, which means if we were to come from E, the total distance to get to G from the start would be nine. And that's worse than the distance we already have, right? So we are not going to do any updates. Even though we found a different path to G, it wasn't better than the one we already knew because this path would have had a cost of nine and nine is worse than eight because we want to minimize our path lengths, right? 
So we leave this the same. And now we've finished looking all of E's children, so we can just continue popping the next thing off the queue. And so we're here at F, and we're gonna look at our children, and I'll take a moment and think again, do we have to make any updates? I think we do, right? Because the total distance to F is six, and this edge is one from F to G, which means if we were to take this path along F and get to G, the total cumulative distance would be six plus one is seven. And seven is less than eight. So we go ahead and update G. And so now we know there's actually a better distance, which was seven. And to get this better distance or the better path, we just have to make sure we're crossing this F G edge. And so we've made the update and we also make sure to make it a priority queue. And now the last thing we pop G off the priority queue. And look at this. We have now popped everything off of our queue, or in other words, colored everything green in our little graphical representation, which means we've confirmed we have the optimal path to every single node. Just to emphasize how this edge two could be interpreted, we're gonna work our way backwards. And so if we wanted to know, hey, I've run Dijkstra's, what's the best path from let's say A to G? We can just start at G and go, okay, which edge did we traverse to get to G? Well, we came from F, so we build that. Then we say, okay, now at F, which edge should we traverse to get there? Well, that was C, so we keep doing this. And then from C, uh, which edge did we traverse to get to C? Well, that was the one from B. And which edge did we traverse to get to B? Well, that was this one. And so we've traversed, um, we built our shortest path by just working backwards using our edge two to like, sort of chase the pointers and we find our best path that way. And that is Dijkstra's algorithm. So congrats on running that.